Wells that are found to be contaminated with bacteria are often shot chlorinated to help address the issue. If E. coli or coliform bacteria are reaching the well due to faulty construction or a contaminated source, shot chlorination will only kill the bacteria temporarily and the bacteria will return. In the case of recurring E. coli or coliform contamination, the source of contamination needs to be addressed or a treatment system should be considered. See the extra chapters on interpreting test results and treatment for further information. Shot chlorination is also commonly used to help address iron or sulfur reducing bacteria, which don't cause health concerns, but can be a nuisance in water systems. Let's walk through the shot chlorination process. First, we need to think about the parts of the system that we want to treat. There's the well with its pump and parts, the pipes to and through the house, the pressure tank, the hot water heater, and any treatment devices. Be sure to check manufacturer recommendations before chlorinating a water treatment system to make sure it will not be damaged by chlorine. In my case here today, I want to disinfect the entire water system, including the hot and cold distribution systems, and I don't have any water treatment devices. Next, we need to determine the amount of water in the well. This requires knowing the diameter of the casing, the total depth of the well, and the depth to groundwater. This information should be available from the well driller's log or from the company that drilled the well. Alternatively, a water well contractor could come out and make these measurements for you. Looking at my well log, I can tell this well is 50 feet deep and it is 30 feet to groundwater. This means I have 20 feet of water in the well. Now we look at the following table to figure out how many gallons of water there are for each foot of water in the well. The casing diameter is 6 inches, so there are 1.47 gallons per foot of water in the well. 1.47 times 20 feet of water equals 29.4 gallons, which I will round to 30. Next, we need to estimate the amount of water in the distribution system. For a typical house, the amount of water in the pipes will be minimal. You might estimate 10 gallons for a typical home. Our hot water heater is 50 gallons and the pressure tank is listed as a 30 gallon tank. The pressure tank doesn't actually fill all the way, but the listed size is close enough. So we have 90 gallons of water in the distribution system. Adding this to the 30 gallons of water we have in the well gives us a total of 120 gallons that we need to treat. Our goal here is to get all of the water in the distribution system up to 200 parts per million of chlorine to kill the bacteria. Higher chlorine concentrations may be necessary in special cases. For instance, if you have determined that you have iron bacteria fouling in your system. So next we need to determine how much chlorine to add to get 200 parts per million. Chlorine is available in a variety of forms including concentrated liquids, pellets, and liquid laundry bleach. People commonly use liquid laundry bleach, so that's what we will use for this demonstration. Do not use any type of scented bleach or any bleach mixed with detergent or other additives. Typical liquid laundry bleach is 6% sodium hypochlorite, which means we need to add at least 3 pints per 100 gallons to get 200 parts per million of chlorine. We will round our gallons to be treated up to the nearest 50 gallons, which gives us 150 gallons. At 3 pints per gallon for 150 gallons, we need to add four and a half pints of liquid laundry bleach. There are two cups in a pint and two pints in a quart. You can use a standard household measuring cup to measure off the amount you calculate. Now we're ready to start. First we need to ensure a clear work environment around the wellhead, removing any obvious contamination sources. Turn off the power to the well pump before removing the well cap. The power supply to the pump typically enters at the well cap and there is often a splice in the wiring just inside the cap. With the power off, remove the well cap and inspect the electrical connections for exposed wire and address any issues. At this point you can turn the power to the pump back on, but use caution throughout the process to avoid getting the spliced parts of the wires wet. Attach a relatively clean hose to the faucet nearest the well, so you can have running water at the wellhead. Chlorine is a hazardous chemical, so when pouring and mixing concentrated chlorine, using gloves and eye protection is important. To start with, I'm going to mix a strong chlorine solution to clean up the wellhead, the cap, and my bucket. 
About a cup of bleach and a half gallon of water is appropriate for this mixture. It is good to leave the chlorine in the well for at least 8 hours and preferably 12 to 24 hours. So after you add the chlorine, you will not have fresh water until you flush the system. Consider running water into jugs for drinking and cooking. It is also important to remove any RO or carbon filters from the system before treating because they can be damaged by the chlorine. We will pour the bleach into a 5 gallon bucket and then fill the bucket to dilute it before dumping it down the well. This will reduce the potential to damage the pitless adapter and piping with the concentrated chlorine. Pour the chlorine solution down the wellhead and then refill your bucket with clean water. We will use this water for rinsing a little later. If you are using chlorine pellets, you may want to use a piece of PVC pipe and a funnel to feed the pellets in below the pitless adapter to avoid damaging it. Now run water into the well using the hose to start circulating and mixing the chlorine in the system. Once you smell chlorine coming out of the hose, move the stream of chlorinated water around in the well to disinfect the sides and parts of the well. After rinsing the well for a few minutes, allow the hose to run down the well for at least 15 minutes to ensure that the chlorine is thoroughly mixed in the system. Turn off the hose and pour the fresh water from the 5 gallon bucket down the center of the well. This will help rinse the chlorine off the pitless adapter to help avoid corrosion from the chlorine. Now replace the well seal, making sure it fits properly and is in good condition. Next go to the faucet in the house that is furthest from the well and run the cold water until you smell chlorine. Turn off the cold water and do the same thing with the hot water. Remove screens from the faucets so they don't get clogged with debris broken loose by the chlorine. Now go to each of the faucets in the house and do the same thing. If you decide to chlorinate the lines to the washing machine, you may not want to run the water into the machine because there are screens that can easily be clogged by the debris loosened by the chlorine. If you decide to run chlorinated water into the drinking water lines for your refrigerator, check manufacturer recommendations and remove any filter or treatment devices associated with the fridge. Now let the chlorine sit in the lines for at least 8 hours and preferably 12 to 24 hours. Now we need to flush the lines. We will start flushing with an outdoor hydrant. The primary reason for this is to avoid putting all of that chlorine into your septic system. We don't want to kill the grass either, so we'll run the water out on a gravel or bare dirt area. The chlorine can also break a lot of debris loose, which is another reason to start flushing at an outdoor hydrant. Run the hose until the chlorine smell goes away. Now we will flush the taps inside the house. If possible, you should attach a hose to the faucet to run the chlorine water outside rather than down the drain into your septic system. Remember to remove the screens from the faucets so they are not clogged by debris flushing from the system. Now we need to wait two weeks and retest for bacteria to see if the disinfection was successful. If a second bacteria test comes up positive, it is necessary to investigate and address probable sources of contamination before repeating the shock chlorination process.